Game seven, go hard or go home. Win or go home. My pick can still stand, but I thought it'd be over by now. But let's talk about why and what's going to happen tonight. DreAllDay.com What's going on, everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. So here we are, Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals. Winner goes on to play the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals. First of all, let's talk about the East, and we're going to keep this quick. I told y'all what was going to happen in this series. I picked the Cavs in five. I said I wouldn't be surprised if it goes six. A couple guards have a good game, or the Cavs end up sweeping them, but the Cavs pretty much you know, kicked the Raptors' ass the last two games of the series and pretty much ended that. So we ain't even got to say nothing else about the East. And the Western Conference, if you saw my prediction video for the Western Conference Finals, my prediction was Oklahoma City defeats Golden State on the road in Game 7 to go to the NBA Finals. So, tonight, Oklahoma City is on the road in Golden State for Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals. So, my prediction could still be correct. We will find out tonight. But, here's the thing. I didn't even think I'd be making this video right here because I thought this series might end in Game 5 or in game six, alas, it did not. Oklahoma City, first of all, game five, I thought that OKC had a chance. I thought they had a chance to possibly win game five, but I knew the Warriors were gonna come out super gangbusters at home. They came out super gangbusters. They played a pretty good game, sent it to game six. When it came to game six at home for OKC, I watched the whole game. They were pretty much in control most of the game. They were in control most of the game, despite the fact that Kevin Durant was, who I don't know what the hell Kevin Durant was doing. We're gonna get to that in a second. Despite the fact KD was missing, despite the fact that they didn't get much from their bench, despite all of that, they were still in control of the game most of the time. They was up by 12, 14 points for a little bit of a stretch of that game. And I said, all they gotta do, I remember thinking this to myself, all they gotta do is not let these guys start making threes. Don't even let them start shooting threes. Don't let Steph Curry start pulling threes on you. And if he does, don't let nobody else start doing it. Make him do it by himself. Definitely don't let Klay Thompson start hitting threes. And what happens? Klay Thompson gets on fire. Sets an NBA record for three-pointers in a playoff game. How many threes did he make? 11 three-pointers in a game. OKC's defense was just completely lackluster. It's like they don't even, they didn't even read the scouting report on this guy. And then they go in and blow the game. I mean, the end of the, the last three minutes of the game, Oklahoma City couldn't inbound the ball. They grabbed the rebound. They get a rebound on defense when they had a chance to make it a game again, get the rebound, and then they turn the ball over after the pass that they made after the rebound between Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. I'm like, these guys are straight deer in headlights. They don't want to win this game. I'm not sure they want to win the series the way they played the last three, four minutes of the fourth quarter in game six. Man, it was just a complete, it was just a complete choke job. It was a choke job. This, it was Reggie Miller against the New York Knicks talking to Spike Lee. It was a complete choke that Oklahoma City did in game six at home when it looked like they had a chance to beat the defending champs, erase their 73 win season from the record book. So I wouldn't be erased, it did happen, but erased from anybody talking about it being a great season because they didn't even get to the finals and they just completely fucking blew it. So let's talk about what actually happened in game six. First of all, let's start with the, you know, let's start with the losing side. We'll start with the Oklahoma City Thunder. I'm looking at the box score right here. Kevin Durant, now he shot 10 for 31 from the floor. Russell Westbrook was 10 for 27. Nobody else, shot, nobody else shot the ball more than six times except Serge Ibaka, who was five of 10 from the floor. His, all five of his misses were three-point field goals. He was one for six on threes. Why Serge Ibaka is shooting all those threes, I have no idea. But here's the thing. You had to have watched the game to understand, to appreciate this box score. Because Kevin Durant's 10 for 31 was not pretty. It was a very ugly, that was the ugliest 29 points I've ever seen Kevin Durant score. First of all, in the first quarter, what kind of shots was he taking? He would get the ball, he would shoot it like immediately. Like he wasn't even getting into the normal rhythm of his shot. He would catch it and just quick shot. And I'm like, why the hell does he keep shooting the ball like that? Why is he shooting so quick as if, as if it's hot potato? He was shooting it so fast. I'm like, all right, cool, he's being aggressive. He's trying to come out and do his thing, but it was no, it was no rhythm to the way he was shooting and he was missing all the shots. So I'm like, what the hell is Kevin Durant doing? He's, it, maybe you could say he was pressing, but it wasn't even, even the way he was shooting the ball, it wasn't like his normal rhythm of shooting. I felt like it was a half second quick, the way he was getting the shots off. Maybe I'm wrong. If y'all saw the same thing, y'all can let me know. But I'm like, what is, what is Kevin Durant doing? He was shooting ridiculous shots. He was missing those shots, but OKC was still in control. That was the, the crazy thing about it, is that your best player or one of your two best players is missing all these shots, taking really bad shots, and Kevin Durant was not good on defense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that in a second. 
but they were still in control of the game, which is great because there's a reason why they were in control of the game because OKC has very, very good defense. A lot of athletes defensively. Let's look at who else was out there. Steven Adams, great player. I like the way Steven Adams plays. He got into a little bit of foul trouble, quote unquote foul trouble. You get two fouls or two fouls in the first quarter, three fouls in the first half. The coach automatically pulls the player out. Not always a good idea because the player you put in to replace them can't do the job because you're afraid of the player picking up another foul, even though they could easily pick it up in the third quarter or the second quarter, whatever the situation is. Steven Adams coming out of the game hurt Oklahoma City, even though Cantor came in and actually did a good job. He came in, he shot four for five from the field, grabbed three rebounds, scored eight points. He did a very solid job in the time that he played. But Steven Adams, I think, is the better fit for OKC in this series with what it is that they have going on. Maybe they could try the two-headed monster with those two guys together. I don't know how much it's going to work against Golden State's small lineup. Serge Ibaka has been kind of... What happened to Serge Ibaka? I think I asked this when I was talking in the Western Conference preview video or even the semifinals before they played San Antonio. What happened to Serge Ibaka? He was damn near an all-star. Maybe he even was an all-star a few years ago. He's one of the best defensive players in the league. What happened to him? What happened to Serge Ibaka? It's kind of like you forget that he's even on the team. He's not the factor that he used to be and I think one reason one reason why he's not the factor that he used to be is that his two teammates Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook they do get into this hero ball thing they definitely got into hero ball in game six they both were just shooting every shot trying to make everything happen turning the ball over not playing good defense which we're going to get to in a moment because that's really where they lost the game and Serge Ibaka has just been completely marginalized he doesn't even touch the ball enough and when he does touch it he's shooting six three pointers in a game out of his ten shots Serge Ibaka can be a useful player, and since he's going up against Draymond, seems like he's guarding Draymond a good amount of time. You got to go at that guy because Draymond's one of the one of the guys that makes it Golden State go. You got to make that guy work on defense. But if he's guarding a guy who's never touching the damn ball, then he don't even have to work on D. And Draymond's a hell of a defender. He made some great plays on D in Game Six. We can get to that in a minute. Now the defense for Oklahoma City. Russell Westbrook, pretty good game stats-wise. I mean, nine rebounds, 11 assists, 28 points. He did shoot 10 for 27. He kept his turnovers to a minimum until we got to the last four minutes of the game. He had four turnovers in, in the fourth quarter after having only one turnover the entire game. He did shoot 10 for 27, but I didn't think he took a whole lot of bad shots. He took Russell Westbrook shots. He was just missing his shots. He is going to take those shots. Kevin Durant's shot selection was really, really bad. It was really bad. And defensively, this is where Oklahoma City lost it. First of all, Andre Robertson is a hell of a defender. When he's guarding Klay Thompson, Klay Thompson is not getting off. But when Robertson wasn't guarding him, because Robertson got a couple, Robertson got a couple fouls. He came out of the game. They put Deion Waiters in the game. Deion Waiters is not the defender that Robertson is. He's not the athlete that Robertson is, and he's not as focused on defense as Robertson is. That's when Klay Thompson started making a couple shots. Klay Thompson makes a shot here, makes a shot there, gets a shot in transition. Now he's absolutely on fire. Then KD was on him a couple times. Russ was on him a couple times. This is what you got to understand about Klay Thompson. Klay Thompson is not Stephen Curry, which means well, I say that to say this. Yes, they both can shoot the hell out of that ball, both of them. There's no doubt about that. Klay Thompson cannot put the ball on the floor the way Stephen Curry can put the ball on the floor. If you are guarding Klay Thompson, when he gets the ball, you need to crowd him, get all up on him, and invite him to put the ball on the floor and drive around you. Invite him to do that. If he's going to score, make him score inside the three-point arc. Klay Thompson is a catch-and-shoot three-point assassin. If you let him catch the ball and shoot it, he has a super quick release. As we all know, he's going to make a whole lot of shots and kill you. I mean, how many threes? Let's go over to the Golden State side. 11 for 18 on three-pointers. He only made 14 shots total. So 11 of his 14 makes were three-pointers because this guy just caught fire. What OKC was doing wrong is that he would catch the ball and they would play him like he might shoot. He might. They was playing him like they was going against you know, Kobe Bryant or even Stephen Curry. Those guys can put the ball on the floor and create off the bounce. Klay Thompson does not create off the bounce. He can, he'll do a couple straight-line dribbles. Maybe he could dribble one or two times to get into his shot. But he's not going to shake you up with a crossover, step back, you know, behind the back spin move, then release a three over you like Steph Curry does. Him, you got to play, you got to play Steph a little bit more honestly because Steph can put it on the floor. He can create, he can go in and out of defense, he can get around guys, and he's a creative finisher at the basket. Klay Thompson doesn't have those skills, but he is a hell of a shooter off the catch. If you let him just catch it, stare down a shot, or size up a shot as quickly as he does and shoot it, he's going to kick your ass. What OKC did wrong, a couple times Kevin Durant, 
Clay would catch the ball and Kevin Durant would kind of get there on D, but he wouldn't have his hands up. But when you go against a guy like Clay, you come out with your hands up like this. Like, listen, I'm playing your jump shot. If you go around me, because my hands are up, cool, go around me and get inside that three-point line and whatever you do, you do, I'm gonna recover. But don't let him do what he does best, which is catch it and shoot three. OKC let him do that too many times yesterday, and it's not even that they let him do it, it's just that they were playing defense like they didn't know the scouting report, right? They gotta know that this guy's a catch and shoot dude. He's not a good ball handler. He's not a good ball handler, he's not. They gotta play him to do the thing that he's not great at, which is put the ball on the floor. Now, I'm not saying he can't score when he puts the ball on the floor, but guess what? I'd rather take my chances of Klay Thompson scoring on me off the dribble than Klay Thompson scoring on me off the catch and shoot, because we see what happens when Klay Thompson is catching and shooting. Can we all agree with that? There was once where he caught it at the top of the key. He was kind of far back from the three-point line, so maybe Russ, who was guarding him, might think, well, maybe he won't shoot it. And here's what Russ did wrong. Russ is playing him. He had his right hand out towards Clay. Clay Thompson is right-handed. So he Russ had his right hand defensively towards Clay, the left side of Clay Thompson's body. Clay Thompson had the ball on the right side of his body. So Russ was leaving the whole right side open, i.e. drive to the right or whatever Russ was thinking at this moment. Maybe he wasn't thinking at all. Clay Thompson pulls the ball up right along the right side of his hip and shoots a three-pointer. Russ, why do you have your hands down? You're going up against a dude who's a catch-and-shoot shooter. And at that point, he had already made like seven, eight, nine three-pointers. Play him like this, like, listen, Whatever you do, I just don't want you to shoot a three-pointer on me. That's how you got to play Klay Thompson. Why OKC didn't do that, I don't know. I don't think this is news to Oklahoma City, what I'm saying right now. I think they just weren't thinking. They didn't have their mind in the scouting report. And when your star players don't got their mind in the scouting report, what do you expect the rest of the players to do? Robertson, in game seven, needs to play every single minute that Clay's on the floor. Robertson got to be on the floor. He got to stay out of foul trouble or whatever it is that got him pulled out for Deion Waiters to play 36 minutes. That can't happen in game seven. Yes, Waiters can get on because Waiters can score some points. Waiters can put the ball in the basket. But Deion Waiters can't defend like Robertson. And Robertson is the best defender you can put on either Steph or Klay Thompson. So he needs to be in the game. He needs to play 48 minutes in game seven. That's just the bottom line. Now, as far as the Golden State Warriors, first of all, let's start on the bench. Nobody came off the bench and did anything for Golden State last night. Spates did nothing. Sean Livingston did nothing. But Andre Iguodala, the reigning NBA Finals MVP, shall, shall we remember, he came in and played some excellent fucking defense in game six. He scored eight points on three of six shooting, missed all his threes, but he scored in that 38 minutes, not scored. He grabbed seven rebounds and he had three steals. The defense that he played in the fourth quarter was fantastic. He stripped uh, Russ one time. Russ got out of control a couple of times in the fourth quarter down the stretch, but Iguodala came in there and he was a, a calming influence. He made a couple shots that they needed. He ran the floor, he played good transition defense, and he made a couple steals on D. Draymond had a couple really good plays on D where he got called for fouls that weren't really fouls. <laughs> so, and I saw it with all the cameras we got now, you can see that they weren't fouls. And there's a couple of times he did foul, he got away with it. So it all really balances out. As far as the rest of the team, uh, we mentioned Draymond Harrison Barnes. Uh, he ain't do much. I think you could you could easily throw Iguodala in the starting lineup in Harrison Barnes' place, or just have a short leash on Harrison Barnes, pull him out quick, and put Iggy in the game because Harrison Barnes ain't really giving Golden State much in this series. He's not giving them much. He did score nine points in Game Six. He had two steals, but he's I'd rather have Iguodala on the court than Harrison Barnes. Let's put it that way. As far as Stephen Curry, I mean, we saw the shots he started making late in the game, fourth quarter. He made six threes. He had nine assists, and he grabbed ten rebounds in the game. That yeah, he, he gets those quiet rebounds. He gets those, you know, going the outskirts of the big guy's rebounds that he grabs because he has high court awareness. Nine for 22 from the floor, not bad, 31 points. And he made the big shots. He made a couple big shots down the stretch that sent it to a game seven. As far as Klay Thompson, I mean, we already talked about that guy. 11 three-pointers, new record. This is what has to happen in Game 7. Let's talk about Game 7, what needs to happen in Game 7, and what I think is going to happen in Game 7. Since I already picked Oklahoma City to win this series in 7, I'm not changing my pick. I'm picking the Oklahoma City Thunder to win Game 7 in Golden State tonight to stamp their ticket to the NBA Finals after they choked in Game 6, after they lost the last two games and the last one at home, after how terribly Kevin Durant played the entire game six, after how many turnovers Russ had down the stretch in the fourth quarter of game six, I'm still picking, even after Klay Thompson broke an NBA record for three-pointers, even after Steph Curry put a knife in Oklahoma City's back again in Oklahoma City, I'm still picking the Oklahoma City Thunder to win game seven on the road tonight. And I'm gonna tell you why and how they need to do it. Number one, number one, Russell Westbrook is going to go gangbusters tonight. Mark it down. 
If you want to, I don't, I don't gamble. If you want to put any prop bets on something Russell Westbrook does, triple double, score 30, 35 points, dunking on somebody crazy, just making super fantastic plays. Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook, ladies and gentlemen, will go gangbusters tonight on the Golden State Warriors. I don't care who's guarding them. It ain't going to be Steph Curry. Uh, probably going to be Klay Thompson or whoever they put on him. Russell Westbrook is going to go off tonight. Number two thing, Kevin Durant is going to play much more under control. I see Kevin Durant coming out in a, a redemptive mindset because everybody's been everybody's going to shit on Kevin Durant from Saturday night, the way he played, all day Sunday and all day Monday until the game. Everybody's going to be shitting on Kevin Durant ask about the way that he played in that game because he played terribly in that game. That's just a fact. But by Kevin Durant standards, let's make sure we throw that in there. He's going to come out focused, but I think Russell Westbrook takes the lead here. I think Russell Westbrook takes the lead for Oklahoma City in this game seven. Next thing that OKC needs, they got to stay, they got to keep their important guys out of foul trouble, i.e., here's the important guys, Andre Robertson and starting center Steven Adams. Those guys got to stay out of foul trouble. Now, Cancer can come in, Serge Ibaka, Deion Waiters, one of those guys come in, Morrow, if he can hit a couple threes, he's useful. Randy Foy is not useful. Russell Westbrook got to get, we get, we need 30, 48 minutes out of Russ. Need 48 out of Robertson if they can do it. Now you can bring in waiters in spot duty for one of those guys for a little while, but Russ got to play a lot. Russ got to play a lot, and you're going to have to bring in Foy as the backup point guard. I guess he's the backup PG unless you're going to put Kevin Durant at point guard. Durant, just play under control. I think he's going to do that. He doesn't need to be told that. Russ is going to take the lead. As far as the Golden State Warriors, obviously Klay Thompson is, is feeling it. I think he's still going to be feeling it tonight after what he did in game six. They got to just keep Robert. Robertson's on Klay Thompson. He's not going to hit 11 threes again. I think Robertson can neutralize him. As far as Stephen Curry, Russ, Russ is going to have to be, it's going to be a Herculean game for Russell Westbrook. He got to leave it all on the floor. It's he got to do it on D and he got to do it on offense. He got to guard Steph. He got to really guard Steph. Don't let Steph get off, start hitting these three pointers off the bounce because what the Warriors do is run that pick and roll. They get the switch because OKC is switching so much stuff. And then Steph shakes up the big man and hits the three on the big man. The big man can't move like that. And if the big man crowds too much, that's how Steven Adams picked up a couple fouls. He got real handsy with Steph. If he crowds too much, the stuff goes around him, gets into the paint. And Steph Curry can finish in, in the paint. He's good at finishing in the paint. So Russ got to play some D. Russ might have to. They, I don't, I'm not going to say they need to change their game plan as far as switching the screens. Might be too late to do all that. But Russ got to really D up on Steph Curry. He got to make that guy work. Make him work, be physical with him, and make him work on defense. Russ really got to put some work on Steph Curry's ass in game seven to take some energy off that dude, put some wear and tear on that dude. You got to neutralize one of these guys. It's similar to what I said with the Cavs and the Raptors. If you let both guards, uh, Kyle Lowry and DeRozan, get off, then they can beat you. It's the same thing with Golden State, though, at a higher level for both players. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, I think, is both better than Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. They got to they got to neutralize. The Thunder must neutralize one of those guys. They got to neutralize those guys, one of them at least. Now, one of them gets off and has 30, which I think is probably going to happen. One of them will get 30, probably Steph. Don't let Klay Thompson go get 30 and be making all these damn threes. As far as the rest of the, rest of the players playing in this game, the Warriors have the advantage, obviously, being at home. They got a rock coming off the bench in Andre Iguodala. They got a rock doing the all-everything guy in Draymond Green. This is going to be a hell of a game. It's going to be must-see TV. The winner is going to the finals. I think this game is personal for both teams, the star players on both teams, especially after the way OKC lost game six. I just hope they come out like with a focused mindset, like forget about game six and forget about game five and come out with the mindset that they had in games one, two, three, and four, where they were playing team basketball. They had a scheme, they had a strategy that worked. They were keeping everybody involved and everyone was engaged. But when they start this hero ball shit, KD and Russ, I'm talking to these two guys, when they start this hero ball shit, the other guys aren't involved. They're not touching the ball. And it's not that they don't, it's not that they're not professional and they don't still do their jobs on defense and everything else. It's just that when somebody's engaged, they play at a higher level. It's just a little bit more energy they got. And it was a couple plays that could have went here and here in game six that would have meant the difference in that game. Would have been a difference in Oklahoma City possibly winning that game. So they got to go back to the game plan they used in games one through four. They got them a three to one lead in the series. If they do that, 
and Russ and KD get their teammates involved, trust their teammates to make plays, which they did not do in game six, Oklahoma City will do what I said they would do before the series starts, which is win game seven on the road in Golden State against a team that went 73-9, and nine, just won the championship and got the back-to-back -back two time MVP on their team. They can shock the basketball world. I don't think it really be a shock because there's only two, out two outcomes possibly, but they can make big things happen by winning game seven on the road if they do everything that I just said here. I want to know what y'all think. Make sure you get your, your thoughts, predictions, whatever it is, in before the game starts tonight. Everybody work on your game. DreAllDay.com. What could you not do with more confidence? Less attention to the negativity of other people, more focus on your goals and nothing else, and not letting unfortunate circumstances slow you down. Would all of those help you out? Well, go to DreAllDay.com slash Bulletproof. Check out my new eight-week course called Bulletproof Mindset. Get started, and I'll see you over there. Work on you. If you're on Snapchat, hit me on the Snap. My Snap name is at Dre Baldwin. You already know how that works. And I got a podcast, if you didn't know. It is called Work On Your Game. It is an everyday podcast where I talk about getting yourself into the right mindset, that bulletproof mindset, getting yourself seen, heard, known, getting the exposure you want, and making things happen in your life instead of waiting for things to happen to or for you. Subscribe to that podcast. We're on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Make sure you check it every single day. Make sure you're subscribed so you catch the heat. Work on your game.